And now on Radio 4, we continue our Unmade Movies season with Orson Welles' screenplay, Heart of Darkness, starring James McAvoy. Heart of Darkness, the screenplay by Orson Welles, from the novel by Joseph Conrad, adapted for radio by Jamie Lloyd and Lawrence Bowen. The old New York River, in its broad reach, rests unruffled at the decline of the day spread out in the tranquil dignity of a waterway leading to the uttermost ends of the earth. The traffic of the great city goes on in the deepening night upon the sleepless river. The tidal current runs to and fro in its unceasing service, crowded with memories of men and ships it had borne to the rest of home or to the battles of the sea. Hunters for gold and pursuers of fame what greatness has not floated on the ebb of that river into the mystery of an unknown earth? The dreams of men, the seed of commonwealths, the germs of empires. Further west, on the upper reaches, the place of the monstrous town marked ominously on the sky. A brooding gloom in the sunshine, a lurid glare under the stars. This has also been one of the dark places on the earth. I was thinking the other day of very old times when our fathers first came here to Manhattan Island, 400 years ago. Imagine the trip up this river. Death skulking in the air, in the water, in the bush. They must have been dying like flies here 400 years ago. Land in a swamp, march through the woods, and in some inland post feel the savagery. The utter savagery. All that mysterious life of the wilderness that stirs in the forest, in the jungles, in the hearts of wild men. It has a fascination too. The abomination. You know. Imagine the growing regrets, the longing to escape, the powerless disgust, the surrender, the hate. Maybe we wouldn't feel like that, I don't know. They were conquerors, of course, the men who first sailed into this harbor. They grabbed what they could get from the weak of what was to be got. It's not a pretty thing when you look into it too much. The conquest of the earth, which mostly means the taking it away of those who have a different complexion. What tries to redeem it is the idea at the back of it. There was a man I once knew. I'd like to tell you about him and about the girl, too. The, the girl. But to understand everything, you ought to know about how I got out there, what I saw and how I went up that river to the place where I first met the poor devil. I was over in Europe, loafing around one of the big port towns looking for a ship when I saw a map in a shop window. I've always had a passion for maps. When I was a child, there were many blank spaces on the earth. And when I saw one that looked inviting, I'd put my finger on it and say to myself, when I grow up, I will go there. Well, I'd seen most of those places, except one of them. The biggest, the most blank. There's a river in it, a big river. You can see it on the map. It looks like a snake, uncoiled, with its head in the sea and its tail lost in the depths of the land. Then, I remembered there was a big concern, a 
company for trade on that river, among other places, a Connell company. I thought to myself, they can't trade on that river without some kind of boat. Steamboats. Well, why shouldn't I try and get Charger 1? The snake had charmed me. I got my appointment. One of their captains had been killed in a scuffle with the natives. They made me sign a document. I believe I undertook, among other things, not to disclose any trade secrets. Uh, I'm not gonna. It was just as though I'd been let into some conspiracy. Something not quite right. The whole place was as still as a house in a city of the dead. Mr. Marlowe, there's yet a visit to the doctor. A simple formality. Hmm, good. Good for there. Good for where you're going. Excuse me, w w will you let me measure your head? Yeah, <laughs> what for? I always ask leave, in the interests of science, to, to measure the crania of those going out there. Uh, and when they come back too? Oh, I, I never see them. So, you're going out there. Very interesting. Ever have any madness in your family? Is that question in the interest of science, too? In the tropics, one must, before everything, keep calm. That's what I told them all. Even Mr. Kurtz. K Kurtz? Before everything... Who's he? Mr. Kurtz. Mm. <laughs> of course you know. Our next leader. I never heard of him. Mr. Kurtz is a, is a, is a very great man, sir. He's in charge there. Goodbye. Keep calm. You know, I'm used to clearing out for any port in the world with less thought than most men give across in the street, but now, I felt as though instead of going to the center of a continent, I were about to set off the center of the earth. I left in a company steamer, and we called in every port along the way. And every day, it looked the same, as though we hadn't moved. The edge of a colossal jungle that seemed to glisten and drip with steam. Watching a coast as it slips by your ship is like thinking about an enigma. There it is before you, smiling and frowning, inviting, grand, mean, insipid or savage, and always mute with an air of whispering. Come and fly now. It was upward of 30 days before I saw the mouth of the big river. There's your station. Yeah. And there's the river. You going up there? Yeah. That's right. You belong to the company. Something to do with Mr. Kurt, aren't you? Really interested in ivory, so yes. Funny what some men will do for a few dollars a month. I guess I'll find out. Don't be too sure. I took a man here who hanged himself on the road. Why? Who knows? The sun was too much for him, maybe. Or the country. So farewell. Farewell. Right. Uh, my name is Ernest Stitzer. I have some authority here, but Mr. Blower is the head of this station, the central station. Mr. Stitzer's his assistant. I'm under him, Mr. Kodovic Strunz. How do you do? Mr. Kurtz, of course, is over us all. But, but he's up the river. First, you must get the boat working. Is that the boat? Yeah, that's the boat. Yeah, very regrettable, of course. Nothing irregular, you understand. Oh, no, no, everything's very efficient, very well organized. But the boat, as you see. Yeah, the boat. And no word from Mr. Kurtz all these months. And the young lady is... No, you, you'll find your quarters up there on the hill, Mr. Marlowe. Mr. Garreton will direct you. Oh, hello. 
You gave me a start. You're him, aren't you? Pilot for the riverboat. My name's Marlowe. Mine's Edward Launce Garretton. How do you do? I say, you aren't... I mean, you're an American. Good luck. I'm what's known as the English representative. About the same job as a keeper of a lighthouse, but lonelier. Where's your luggage? We're sending it up. They're probably all busy searching it. Yep. Yeah. Searching it? Medical comforts? No, thank you. Bribery. So there's a piano. I don't know what for. My job's to keep my eyes open, and theirs is to keep my mouth shut. Why should they search my luggage? What are they looking for? Oh, books to burn. Seditious literature, inflammatory pamphlets from the corrupt democracies, something radical like a declaration of independence. What are your politics? I got no sympathies one way or another. I'm just here to run a boat. Now, you're an American. You believe in free speech and the equality of man. If you don't, you will when you get out of here. These boys will drive you to it. What? In They're blasting. I don't know what for. He can't do a thing without Kurt. Kurt? He must be some wonderful man. Yes, he must be. If he's still alive. Oh, shut up out there! Sorry, Marlowe, it's the tropics, dear old boy. Hello? Oh, Miss Gruner. Mr. Marlowe. Oh, don't get up, Eddie. Go on playing. It's astonishing. Well, you must excuse me, Mr. Marlowe. I can't help remarking a certain resemblance. Do you see it, Eddie? Oh, but of course, you don't know him. I know Mr. Marlowe well, sir. He doesn't remind me of anybody around here, thank God. Pretty obvious way of getting acquainted, I must say. <laughs> Have you seen the new pilot? He's in here. Ah, Mr. Stitzer. Find anything in his luggage? Mr. Marlowe's waiting for his things. Mr. Marlowe's luggage will be sent up to him. This is not Mr. Marlowe's quarters. What are you doing with it now, Melchers? Beg your pardon? I'm not the porter. You boys making a survey of his neckties? Uh, Mr. Marlowe... Who's in charge of the committee to investigate and report on Marlowe's shaving cream? Who's got that job? The manager of the station. The manager, no less. I beg your pardon. You see, Marlowe, you're getting special treatment. The manager of the station, Mr. Blower, will see you now, Mr. Marlowe. He's waiting in his office. Seen your boat, Captain? From a distance. It's better that way. Pretty bad, is it? Oh, it's got everything you could wish for but a bottom. The manager tore that out of her last week. Come, Melchers. The boys got restless and decided not to wait for you. They were going to rescue Kurtz, so they took your boat over to the South Bank and ran it on the rocks. Very simple. Bombs! What? Bombs! Marlowe's an anarchist. He's blown up the manager. Melchers! <laughs> it's a new drain system. It's dynamite. The new drain system. Everything's new here. Everything's a system. The manager is waiting, Mr. Marlowe! You haven't met Mr. Blower, our good manager? No. This is his dining hall. The other agents were always fighting about precedence at dinner, so he made the table round. Where he sits is the first place, the rest is nowhere. Except for that, he isn't very bright, but he doesn't get sick. The rest of us do, and eventually we go home or drop dead. A man who comes out here should have no entrails. Mr. Marlowe, the manager is waiting in his office. Mr. Marlowe, you've been a long time coming. The situation is serious. The upriver stations must be relieved. There have already been so many delays. We do not know yet who's dead and who's alive. Yet. And we cannot think what has happened to Mr. Kurtz. He was warned. We all warned him. Y yes? Stitzer? Oh, oh, yes, we all warned him, Mr. Marlowe, but... Uh... Mr. Marlowe knows this company is actually controlled by our government. It occupies a curious, uh, delicate position. We recognise the importance of Mr. Kurtz to our government. It was not for us to stand against his wishes. He was interested in the country. He wished to explore. And now he is trapped up there, perhaps. Well, I won't say. Questions might be asked by the people. Mr. Kurtz is not popular in certain quarters. Mr. Kurtz is, of course, an exceptional man. That man inside jabbered about his Mr. Kurtz, and outside, the silent wilderness surrounded this cleared speck in the earth, great and invincible like evil or truth, waiting patiently. The river, glittering, flowed broadly by without a murmur. Beyond the fence, the forest, 
and through the dim stir of that lamentable courtyard, the silence of the land went home to one's very heart. A great silence around and above. Perhaps, on some quiet night, the tremor of far-off drums. They all seemed to be waiting for something, but all that ever came to them was disease. The word ivory rang in the air, and you'd think they were praying to it. Mr. Marlowe, how long will it take to repair the riverboat? I need to take a closer look. The situation is serious. Very. It is thought back in Europe that an expedition to relieve Mr. Kurtz at this time would be ill-advised. It has been decided to withhold intelligence of his absence from the press. Shh. You're done for the day? Yes, Miss Gruner. We ran out of dynamite. Marlow, we have a very high death rate. More last month. Four. That's not counting the natives, Seanman. Well, of course not. So, Mr. Marlow. Yes. You can understand our anxiety. It's up to you to bring him back, Marlow. Yeah. It's up to you to bring him back. And where you're going, Marlow, it's much worse. Now, when will the boat be ready? I haven't examined it yet. I don't know. Up there, in the interior. Let's say three months. The station's upriver. They don't last long out there. Three months, yes? That ought to do the affair. Goodbye, Miss Greener. Goodbye, Mr. Shulman. I go away tomorrow. I'm going up the river. Stations two and three will be hard up for supplies, Mr. Marlowe. I go up by canoe. Not up to the top, but as far as I dare. Good night. Tell me what you meant by two and three. Are they trading stations? That's right, Mr. Marlowe. There are three stations on the river. Give me a pencil, Eddie. This is number one, the first station. Here the jungle is very thick, but the river is deep. You will manage this easily. De Tirpitz is here. The captain before you was killed here. And this is as far as Schulman will get with his canoe. This station is in very wild country. It's maintained because it's near the best elephants. For the cheapest trade, a few glass beads or some calico, the agents obtain great quantities of prime ivory. But they must be relieved often. It is impossible to live as far up the river as this for very long. That is why you must make every haste to repair your boat. And beyond is unexplored. There are cannibals. Kurtz is somewhere here. You're trying to frighten me. Are you frightened? No. I believe you. It seems to me that I'm trying to tell you a dream. Of course I can't. It's impossible. We live as we dream, alone. I've seen the devils of the world, the devils that drive and sway men, violence and greed, and the devil of hot desire, and they were strong. But here in this land, I found the flabby devil, the flabby, pretending, weak-eyed devil of a rapacious and pitiless folly. How insidious he could be, too, I was only to find out several months later, and a thousand miles up that river. I can only repeat to Miss Gruner what has been made very clear. There is no place for a woman. Miss Gruner cannot sail on this boat. Mr. Malo, the boat is ready, sir. No, I don't think you have the authority. Authority? No. Ridiculous. Mr. Blower is in charge of the station. Miss mm. Gruner, I command you to get off the boat. Hello. Hello. Do you mind if I stay here? Of course not. I'm glad you won the argument. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm glad you're coming up the river. I guess I shouldn't be. I didn't win the argument. I just didn't get off. 
it's going to be dangerous. But then you told me that the first day I came here. Are you thinking about him? Yes. You're a good navigator, aren't you? I've been on a lot of boats. Don't know much about rivers, though. Particularly this one. You told me nearly everything that first day. Two ivory stations and then darkness. One of those blank places on the map. He'll have a map. Will he? He'll make one. He wouldn't leave it blank. What do we think about you coming? I don't understand. Well, Kurt's like it that you're taking these kind of risks. Oh, he despises cowardice. <laughs> he doesn't know I'm here at all. No? I was to wait for him in Europe. He was going to come back for me four months ago. There were no letters. They wouldn't tell me anything at the company. So I came out here in spite of them. I was afraid. He was almost too popular. There was no good reason for sending him to the dark country except to get him out of Europe. And that's why I am going to be there when they find him. Do you think that they'd rather not find him? He's needed in Europe now badly. But I can't trust these agents. They're all afraid of Kurtz, but they hardly know him. Would that make any difference? It's impossible to know him without loving him. How long have you known him? Do you mean how much do I love him? No. We met nearly two years ago. I didn't like him at first. I thought he was, oh, I don't know what, cruel, ruthless. First impressions. I wasn't very intelligent or grown up. What made you change your mind? It's not easy to refuse him anything. He wanted to know me. I got to know him. Mm hmm. What's the word? Nobility. Ah, oh, but that sounds stuffy. And he is anything but that. <laughs> His laughter. No. I can't tell you about him. He's just a demagogue in the uniform to a foreigner. To somebody who doesn't know him. I think I know what Kurtz means to your people. I can't tell what he means to you. <clears throat> You're talking about Kurtz? Maybe don't mind my joining you. I'm just about as welcome back there as you are. The manager would like to see you, Marlowe. What about? Who knows? One of those conferences of theirs. The kind that never end. I can't leave the wheel now. The river's dangerous here. It's dangerous all the way. We have a steersman. He's a prodigy, an emissary of forceful justice and science and progress and devil knows what else. <laughs> what are you talking about? Kurtz, of course. Today he's in charge here. Next year, two years more, and... But I dare say you know what he'll be in two years' time, if we get him back. And Barry! Yes, sir? Come in here and take the wheel. Anything looks bad, you blow the whistle. Understand? Yes, sir. Mr. Marlowe, the manager wants to see you. Ah, yes. Mr. Marlowe. Yes. When do we reach the second station? Well, don't you know? None of us have made the trip before, Mr. Marlowe. As far as I can tell, we should be there first thing tomorrow. Mr. De Tierpitz will be very impatient. Do you understand? It has been some time since he's been relieved. Shulman went up, of course, a few weeks ago with some supplies. You can, good, sir. Mr. De Tierpitz must be almost starving. The point is, Marlowe, we cannot afford to take our time on this trip. There must be no delays. We're responsible for the life of Mr. Kitts. If he hadn't wrecked the boat before I got here... Uh, Mr. Marlowe. Yes? Is there nothing to interfere? Nothing to stop you from making full speed. What do you mean, interfere? You realize how difficult the river is to navigate? Precisely. If Miss Gruner here... Uh, what about Miss Gruner? Miss Gruner is engaged to Kurtz. I don't understand you. She belongs to Kurtz. Quiet. What's wrong with you, Malchus? You are hired to pilot the ship, Mr. Marlowe. I don't think Mr. Kurtz would be happy to learn that you've allowed anything to interfere with your efficiency. Look out! Low branch! Oh, Shoot it! 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 Shoot
Oh. He's... Uh, he's dead. <gasps> Melchers is dead. Look. Station number two. Who's that? Manager station number two. Assistant. You go back now, by the engine. Yes, sir. The manager says for you to remain on the boat. What do you think I'm going to do? This is the station. What's this one like? This one? Our new friend, the number two manager. What's he like? I don't know. I haven't met him. They say he's not so nice. Bad blue blood. You're American, yes? Close the door. Yes, sir. The Tirpitz is back there with your manager. They're busy. Didn't see me here. What's happened to your face? Ah, uh, he hit me. Who? Let me fix it. It's all right. He hits me all the time. I'm used to it. What do you want with me? Look out there. You never saw so much ivory. All your life you never saw so much. That's the most ivory anybody ever got. I'll tell you the truth. All these months he beats me. Now I'll get back at him. Who are you talking about? The Tirpitz. He's telling them it's his ivory. He takes the credit. He's lying. It's not his ivory. Mr. Oh. De Tirpitz. Ah, uh, Mr. Marlowe. Mr. Lutpold de Tirpitz, the manager of station number two. Mr. Marlowe, you seem to have met my assistant, Mr. Siebert Muse. Uh, I beg pardon. Uh, Miss Gruner. Miss Gruner is the fiance to Mr. Kurtz. Mm, yes. There's a ceremony to be held in the jungle. Mr. Muse, I think you'd better look after the loading. Uh, there's no need, Mr. De Tirpitz. Everything is going along regularly. We're undermanned. Most of my boys deserted two months ago. Deserted? Our, our boys will be plenty. We should be loaded any time. Deserted, did they? Well, I won't ask you why. Don't you know who I am? No, I don't. Have you forgotten? I'm not his assistant. He lied. I've been working for him, but I'm not his assistant. Then who are you? I'm Mr. Kirtz's assistant. I came down with the ivory. It's not his ivory. It belongs to Mr. Kirtz. <laughs> Continuing up that river was like traveling back to the earliest beginnings of the world. When vegetation rioted on the earth, the big trees were kings. Trees. Millions of trees. Massive. Immense. Running up high. And at their foot, hugging the bank against the stream, crept the little, begrimed steamboat, like a sluggish beetle crawling on the floor of a lofty portico. Where the company man imagined it crawled to, I don't know. To some place where they expected to get something, I bet. For me, it crawled toward Kurtz. Each station should be like a beacon on the road toward better things. A center for trade, of course, but also for improvement, for instructions. Did he say that? It's called idealism. He's crazy. They're all crazy. It was Eddie and Deterpitz. They were standing behind the pilot house, and I guess they thought I couldn't hear them. He thinks anything, anything, can be done in this country. When one comes out here, you conceive. It's not to gaze at the moon. Nobody here, you understand, here, can endanger your position. I could tell they were talking about Kurtz. He's up there. Yes. Is he alone? Yes. He sent... Muse down the river with a note to me in these terms clear this poor devil out of the country and don't bother to send me any more like him I'd rather be alone nothing since then of course ivory yes I know lots of it record consignment prime sort lots most annoying from him. Shows us in a bad light. No man can live in that climate. That's true. Ah, my boy. Trust to this. I say, trust to this. He meant the river. The lurking death, the hidden evil, the profound darkness of its heart. Hello? Hello? 
You're up late. I can't sleep. Mr. de Tierpitz and Eddie are still up. I heard them talking. So did I. I'm afraid I interrupted them. It's a bit dangerous, this sailing at night. Yes. Can you hear the drums? Yeah. Uh, I think so. They must be very far away. You see that? There it is. Sir! Station number three! <laughs> What's happened? Are you excited, Miss Gruner? What about? There's just a chance he may be here. What makes you think Kurtz might be here? He could be here. Hello? Yes? Hello? Hey! Hello? Yeah? Blow the whistle! I'll blow it. No, you come up here. You, I better stay by the wheel. Shut up with that whistle. What? We might want to get started quick. Uh, stop that whistle. Listen. Quiet. What's wrong, Mr. Deterbitz? Fools. Drums. What did I tell you? Hello. What do you make of this? I told you strange things were happening on the river. I was speaking to Marlow. You'd better get off and take a look. That might not be advisable. You mean you're afraid? Mr. de Tirpitz, why don't you go ashore? <laughs> All right, I will. Will you come too, Mr. Marlow? Mr. Marlow will stay here by the wheel. In case you have to leave suddenly. Very well. What did you find? They're in there. Why don't they come out? Are they dead? Yes. Fever? No. Who are they? I... I can't tell. They haven't any heads. Start the boat. Marlo, Marlo, wait, 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 wait,
a thousand drums. The steamer toiled along slowly on the edge of a black and incomprehensible frenzy. The prehistoric man was cursing us, praying to us, welcoming us, who, who could tell? We couldn't understand because we were too far and we couldn't remember. Because we were traveling in the night of the first ages, those ages that are gone, leaving hardly a sign, and no memories. But the drums spoke to you, straight out of the Stone Age. You didn't know the men in there. What thrilled you? was just the thought of their humanity, like yours. The faintest trace of a response to the terrible frankness of that noise, a meaning in it for you. And why not? The mind of a man is capable of anything because everything is in it. All the past as well as all the future. A man can face that frenzy, but he must be at least as much of a man as those on the shore. What's in there, after all, but truth? A man must meet that truth with his own true stuff. You wonder that I didn't go ashore for a howl and a dance? Well, no, I didn't. I had to watch the steering. Some fifty miles beyond, we came upon a hut of reeds. And on a stack of firewood, we found a piece of board with faded pencil writing on it. Hurry up. Approach cautiously. There is a signature, but it's not legible. Not curd, sir. Much longer word. Maybe Shulman. Hurry up. Where? Up river. Mm. Approach cautiously. The steamer seemed at her last gasp and I caught myself listening on tiptoe for the last beat of the boat. But still we crawled. Crawled on toward Kurtz, deeper and deeper into the heart of darkness. The drums have stopped, sir. Mr. Marlowe, we will not proceed after sundown. Our light may be seen. Do you think we aren't watched? It was very quiet there. The living trees might have been changed into stones, even to the slenderest twig, lightest leaf. It wasn't sleep. It seemed unnatural, like a state of trance. You looked on amazed and began to suspect yourself of being deaf. Then the night came suddenly and struck you blind as well. What's that sound? I don't know. I know what it is. Marla. Look. What is that? <laughs> Drunk. That's how they do it. Where did you get that bottle? Medical comforts. Are you suggesting that the natives in there are all blowing on champagne bottles? Different sizes. That's a magnum. Of course, causes and champagne bottles. Bamboo. Different sizes of bamboo. He stopped. Those in there, they know that magic. Mm. What magic? Gone magic. It means we should only use new tricks. Tricks they don't know. 
I wonder what occurred to you. Hmm? Arrows! Get up! Ah! Eddie! Ah! Ah! Eddie's hit! Eddie's hit! Ah! It's gone through his neck. When the sun rose, there was a white fog, very warm and clammy and more blinding than the night. What we could see was just the steamer we were on and that was all. Our eyes were no more used to us than if we'd been buried miles deep in a heap of cotton wool and felt like it too, choking, warm, stifling. Mr. Marlowe, I think we'd better go at once. I authorize you to take all the risks. I refuse to take any. Well, I must defer to your judgment. You're the captain. Catch them. Catch them. Give them to us, eh? Give them to us. Mm. Uh, who? Those men in there. Bad tribes. You catch them, give them to us. Uh, to you, eh? What would you do with them? Mm -hmm. It's them. I guess I should have been horrified. But it occurred to me that my crew must be very hungry. Why they didn't go for us, I don't know. I thought I might be eaten by them before very long, but I admit that just then I saw, in a new light, as it were, how unwholesome the company men looked, and I hoped, I, yeah, I actually hoped, that I wasn't quite so unappetizing. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Blower? <laughs> I, I, I can't. Get a hold of yourself, Flower. Harold! Look! It's. it's fireworks! How do you know? This is magic! Fireworks! Kurtz is alive! See! The attack has stopped! Kurtz is alive, look at this. The natives are getting civilized quick. This was the Stone Age until just recently, look at this. What about it? It's an arrow, a very primitive weapon, except this one has a steel tip. Go any further. Oh, where are we going? Idiot. We're going after Kurtz. I, I don't know what you mean by after him. How do you Americans say, Marlowe? Dead or alive? I don't like your attitude. We can scarcely call ourselves a rescue party now. I don't like it. You don't rescue a man who shoots you with steel arrows. What do you do to him? You capture him. You shoot him. Well, how'd you do it? You can't do anything. I shall have to report this conversation. <laughs> who to? To Kurtz. You think we'll ever get out of here? I don't like your attitude! Neither do I! Mr. Kurtz did not order that attack on the river. He called it off. Did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. Muse was his assistant. He's been with him up there. Have you forgotten that? No. They love him. Who loves him? The cannibals? Yes. Why? You don't know him. You haven't heard him speak. What does he talk about? Everything. Everything. <laughs> He... Oh, he made me see things. I thought he fired you. That's true. He wanted to kill me. But I don't judge him. Oh, wait, kill you? Come on. There was nothing on Earth to prevent him from killing whoever he pleased. What... What are those things out there, Mr. Blower? Uh, okay. you, you'd better run over and take a look. Uh, the sky rockets came from further east, but we'd better find out. Uh, Mr. Strunz, just run out there far enough to see. Go on. Yes, Mr. Blower. 
he hated all this. But somehow, he couldn't get away. When I had a chance, I begged him to try and leave while there was time. He'd say, yes, and then he'd go off on another of his trips. Trips? He'd disappear for weeks. Forget himself. Amongst these people, forget himself, you know. These, uh, trips of his. Oh, what was he doing? Exploring? Oh, yes. He discovered lots of mountains. A lake, too. Lake Kurtz. I don't know exactly in what direction. It was dangerous to inquire too much. It must be back there somewhere. Where? Where we're going now. Towards the fireworks. These expeditions were mostly for ivory? He had no goods to trade with by that time. There must be a good lot of cartridges left even yet. To speak plainly, he raided the country. <laughs> of course. But how could he? He was alone. He had the cannibals. They adore him. What can you expect? He came to them with thunder and lightning, you know, and they had never seen anything like it. And, and very terrible. He can be very... <laughs> You can't judge, Mr. Kurtz. You, you can't judge him as you would an ordinary man. Of course not. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, dear Herr Pitts. No, 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 no. Mr. Kurtz isn't judged at all. He's, uh, he's explained. And you're all good at that. You've had experience for several years now explaining things in Europe. Well, <laughs> there's, there's something that you're not going to get to explain. What do you mean? I've put up with it. I've put up with it in Europe. I had to. But I don't have to here. Their, their heads. Oh, up there on those poles. Human heads. The heads of white men. The ones that were missing at Station 3. I thought they'd turn up. Brent. And Neyman and Verbruggen? Yeah. And, and Schumann. My God. I don't care what you do to me. You wore the cannibals. I'm gonna kill that man. Decapits! I put up with you all for long enough. But I don't have to put up with it out of here! You drove me out here! I gotta kill him! What should we do? We might force him back to the ship and lock him up. Oh. N no. 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 Let let's wait and see. What is that? It's a temple. Yes. Uh, well, uh, there are canoes. Perhaps we should proceed at once across the lake. But suppose Mr. Kurtz is held captive. What are these natives doing kneeling on their faces? Oh. Oh, I never saw so many. There are hundreds of them. I saw natives behave like this. Perhaps it might be wise. I, I mean to say, to show our friendly intentions. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, drop to your knees. What are you doing? You, you can see what I'm doing. Come on, get down. Get down. Get down, put your faces in the mud. Not me. You make them angry. You own everything. No, no, don't shoot him. Not yet. Marlow! Where's Marlow? I'm not disclosing any trade secrets, but I want you to understand now that Mr. Kurtz had taken a high seat amongst the devils of the land. I mean literally. I have full information about these things. You see, I have the care of his memory. Well, he won't be forgotten. Whatever he was, he was not common. His 
Let's see, his nerves went wrong. He presided at certain midnight dances ending with unspeakable rites, which gathered were offered up to him, to Mr. Kuritz himself. You can't understand. How could you? How could you imagine what particular region of the first ages a man's untrammeled feet may take him into by the way of solitude? Utter solitude. By the way of silence. Utter Silence. I took a canoe across the lake. I climbed a ladder that extended up from the mists of the water into the great temple above. There, inside, just visible in the light of the moon, was Kurtz. Who's that? The Turpins. He's the manager of number two. You must learn to pray. How many more of them? Six. Six counting me. No, I'm not counting you. You'd never understand. Five. Hmm. I need that. In my infinite wisdom. How many have you got there? From the river to the mountains, all the people are united. And all you have to do is say the word. God! Are you going to eat us? Hmm. The superior races are not very palatable. They are praying to me. I have a gun. You won't leave this place alive. No, I'll leave this place. I have another world to conquer. What world? Down the river. Five more continents. And then I'll die. Civilization. Is that all you want? I want... everything. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm answering a prayer. My angels. There's Blower and Stitzer and Muse. They're praying too. There comes one of them in a canoe. That's the Turpins. Sacrilege. Is the lake supposed to be holy? The holy of holies. Where you stand is taboo place of the Most High. Are you the pilot of the riverboat? Yes. That's a pity. I had plans for you. These blasphemies must be stopped. By arrows with steel tips? Yes. Jets, I can't see you. I'm not always visible. You're crazy. You're lucky the tribes don't speak English. Do you threaten me? Yes! You're a brave man. Come up here. I'll come up and kill you. It is time! Mwike Uluwami! Kiabakia Pwana! Beam Wanda Wami! Mwike Uluwami! Fumu etu! Ketu shiye! Kayenda! Kubika lata dan yoso! Mujina! Kiamoso etu! Chile Munto Umbo Mwike Uluwami U Mwipaye Mwipaye Kurt The Tepet My beloved son In whom I am well pleased Look over there what do you see? Oh. Human head. 
it. Thousands of them. <sighs> you! My compliments. They're yours. Beyond? What do you see beyond? A throne. An empty throne. Go and sit in it. I'm going to shoot you. Why? If you do, you know what will happen. And what happened to Shulman to you, and Mark, Brent Blower, and Nyman and, Strong, and Verbruggen? I won't be able to stop it. I'll be dead, you see. There will be anarchy. How about Shulman and the rest? Couldn't you stop that? Yes. That wasn't anarchy. It was law. Whose law? My law. They were traitors to the state. Your state? You're a foreigner, Marlowe. Understand that our nation has no borders. Humanity depends on our race. Outside there are 10,000 savages. Until I came, the most primitive of mankind. And now? Now, they are enlightened. The tribes unified in the service of their leader. Who pretends to be God. The leader, the strong voice of authority, is the highest expression of our culture, the fulfillment of the superior race. I tell you, God is made in the image of man. We were attacked on the river. I called it off. Their natural passions can't be controlled. Natural. They know you've come for me. To take me away from them. They love me. Do you understand that? They are afraid of you. You must have told them that we were evil spirits. Don't you know what it is to command souls? Greatness. Can't you see what I mean to them? The tuppets. Get up on that throne. <laughs> I'm going back down the river. I've got history to write. I'm just beginning. Beginning. Get up on that throne. The turpets? Get up on that throne. It's yours now. The turpets? I leave it to you. The turpets were leaving. The power and the glory. It's yours. The first real dictatorship. Oh! Now is the time! How does it feel, Deterpet? Are you comfortable in the seat of heaven? <laughs> Look! Is that the moon down there below us? Mr. Kurtz, you, you remember Mr. Stitzer? We were most concerned, Mr. Kurtz. We rejoice that we have managed to... Uh, rejoiced that we have managed to... Uh, to find you. Kurtz started to run. The natives stayed crouched but watched with their eyes as he plunged among them wildly and finally fell on top of them. Still, they didn't move. He struggled across the bodies of the prone natives, but the company men bore down on him and grabbed him by his arms and legs, lifting him off the sprawled bodies. Do you think he's asleep? How near are they? I wonder how Mr. de Tirpitz is making out back there. There will be no difficulty with the boat? I don't think so. We can start away the moment we get there. Yeah. Good. If it wasn't for Kurtz, we'd be on our way now. Mr. Kurtz is very ill. We must make every sacrifice. 
We must, of course, rush help to Mr. de Tirpitz when we get back. His position is not enviable. I would not care to be left alone up there to govern all those savages. But Mr. Geertz insisted. That, that's true, Mr. Stitzer. He insisted. M Mr. Geertz knows those people. He knows what's best. That's true. He knows what's best. It's not for us to question. He had to leave someone there in his place. After all, he'd made himself a god to them. Uh, they made him a god. Uh, well, he subdued them to a great extent and brought many benefits. His methods were unusual, but the circumstances... Required forceful leadership. That's right, Mr. Stitzer. They made him a god because even among savages, the great leader is recognized. And his attributes are godlike. Mr. Kurtz was a very great man. Mr. Kurtz? What is it? Mr. Kurtz? He's gone. Get him! Get him back! He mustn't escape! Don't you go that way. Marlowe there. Everyone a different way! Get him back! But be careful. They mustn't hear us out there. Get him back! Look! What? Shush! Look here! Shush. The natives are out there. They mustn't hear us. That's true. It's fresh tracks. Yes, they must be his. Come on. Shush. He's crawling on all fours. If we run, we can head him off. We might get in front of him. We are in front. But where are the tracks? There aren't any. If he gets back to the savages, we're finished. In his condition, there's no telling on him. Look, where? D no, I I'm wrong. I thought I saw something stir there in the mud. My nerves, I I'm not well. Mr. Kurtz! Mr. Kurtz. Well, Mr. Kurtz. Don't you think you'd better let us take you back to the stretcher? Mr. Kurtz? Where it's warm, Mr. Kurtz. Where you can rest. Uh, 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 I was on the threshold of great. swiftly out of the heart of darkness, bearing us down toward the sea. And Kurtz's life was running swiftly too, ebbing, ebbing out of his heart into the sea of inexorable time. There's Elsa. Elsa? My intended. Close the shutters. 
The shutters are closed. The light! Elsa. You must explain everything. No, I, I can't. I want no, no more than justice. She loves me, Marla. You're a little like me. I, I thought of leaving you in my place in the temple instead of that form. You know, what's his name? The Turpets. Well, why not go down the river instead of me? Why not take my place there with Elsa? What? You're in love with her, aren't you? Why don't you marry her? <laughs> light! Shut up, Light! You came a long way for me, Marla. A long, hard way. It was a good hunt, and you caught me alive. <laughs> but I'm cheating them. I'm gonna be a martyr. I'm gonna die. You? A martyr? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm more than a hero already. <laughs> Not to you, of course. To my people. I'm every one of them. <laughs> Think of it, Marla. I'm a whole nation's long, golden dream. And to you, a miserable wretch you once caught, grubbing for ivory in the bush, crazy with disease who died in captivity. Uh, you're more than that. Or less. Or worse. Or worse. How do you know you're going to die? What I've had is fatal. It's called... Power. Do you understand that? You said I never would. You said you ran away. Uh, I don't understand that. I was afraid. <laughs> understand this much. Everything I've done up here has been done according to the method of my government. Everything. <laughs> There's a man now in Europe trying to do what I've done in the jungle. He will fail. In his madness, he thinks he can't fail, but he will. A brute can rule only brutes. Remember the meek. The meek. I'm a great man, Marla. Really great. Greater than great men before me. I know the strength of the enemy. It's terrible weakness. The meek, you and the rest of the millions, the poor in spirit, I hate you. But I know you for my betters. Without knowing why you are, except that yours is in the kingdom of heaven, except that you shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Don't mistake me, I haven't gone moral on my deathbed. I'm above morality. No. I've climbed higher than other great men and seen farther. I'm the first absolute dictator. The first complete success. I've known what the others try to get. I've gotten it. In the one place in the world where it could be got. I'm the man on top. The one man. All the rest are six feet underground where I buried them. That's the game. Bury the rest of them alive. Stay on top yourself. 
I won the game. But the winner loses too. He's all alone. And he goes mad. That's why I ran away. I ran from the face of darkness and then as I started back down the river I saw that there was darkness there too. And failure. So I hid in the charnel house where you found me and then I, I ran again. Madness is better than defeat. Down the river is the light of reason showing still behind the darkness, marking the evil, marking the shape of the original lie. I say I'm moral again. I'm not. I'm just practical. I know when you die. I thought the time had come for me. The sun was low over the world, and my shadow was long. It would cover everything. I know now, it's not long enough. No man's is long enough. The strong die with their dream. I'm the first to die awake. Our shadows. Dark like night. And where they fall, the jungle grows again. But the sun always goes down. Mine did. And the world has a darker shadow. Darker than mine. I'm gonna die before daybreak. I'm afraid to live, but the door might find me a very little man. Kurt. Kurt? What are you looking at? The horror. The horror. buried something in that river, and then they nearly buried me. I nearly died of fever myself. I nearly said my own last words there on the river, and I found that I had nothing to say. The Kurtz had something to say. He'd summed up. He'd judged. The horror. True, he died and I lived. Maybe that's the whole difference. Maybe all the wisdom and all the truth are just compressed into that moment of time in which we step over the threshold of the invisible. I saw him again. Months later, at the foot of the river, I saw him with Elsa. I saw those eyes, that wide, immense stare condemning, loathing the whole universe, piercing enough to penetrate all the hearts that beat in the darkness. Yeah, 
he lived then before me. And the memory of what I heard him say there, with the horn shapes stirring at my back in the glow of fires, those words came back to me. I want no more than justice. Mr. Marlowe. I saw them in the same instant of time, his death and her sorrow. I saw them together, heard them together. You were with him when he died? Mm -hmm. The horror. The horror. You knew him well. Uh, I, I knew him as well as it's possible for one man to know another. The horror. You know what vast plans he had. Something must remain. His words, at least, have not died. His words will remain. He died as he lived. His end was in every way worthy of his life. And I w was not with him. Everything that could be done... Oh, but I believed in him more than anyone on Earth. More than his own mother. More than himself. He needed me. Me. Forgive me, I... Uh, I have mourned so long in silence. In silence. You were with him to the last... To the very end. I heard his very last words. Repeat them. I want something, something to, to live with. The horror. The horror. Dusk was repeating his words around us, like the first whisper of a rising wind. His last words to live with. Don't you understand? I love him. I love him. I loved him. His last words. The last word that he pronounced was... Your name. I knew it. I was sure. She was sure. It seemed that the heavens would fall upon my head. But the heavens don't fall for such a trifle. Would they have fallen, I wonder, if I had rendered Kurtz that justice which was his due? Should I have told her the truth? I want only justice. I couldn't. I couldn't tell her. It would have been too dark, too dark altogether. <sighs> We've lost the first of the ebb. The offing is barred by a black bank of clouds in the tranquil waterway leading to the uttermost ends of the earth flow somber under an overcast sky. It seems to lead into the heart of an immense darkness. Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a screenplay by Orson Welles. Marlowe was played by James McAvoy, Kitts by Jonathan Slinger, and Elsa by Phoebe Fox. Eddie was played by Max Bennett, De Tierpitz and Melchers by John Heffernan, Muse by Jack Holden, Stitzer by Gerald Kidd, 
Struns by Elliot Levy, Schulman and the Steersman by Shoyun Schotte, and Blau was played by Joe Stone Fewings. Other parts were played by members of the company. Original music by Ben and Max Ringham. Art of Darkness was directed by Jamie Lloyd, produced by Lawrence Bowen, and was a feel-good fiction production for BBC Radio 4. Tomorrow afternoon's drama is Homer's tale of Odysseus's epic journey home from the Trojan Wars, as told by the comedy trio The Penny Dreadfuls. Stand by for an enchantress and incredible monsters in the Odyssey, tomorrow just after three. And this time next week, you can hear the last in the series of Unmade Movies, a Hitchcock film that was never made. The last thing a dying man sees will remain imprinted on his retina forever after. A radical operation gives a blind man sight. I have an overpowering feeling that I've seen that man before. Starring Hugh Laurie, Rebecca Front and Peter Serafinowicz. Let us suppose that the dying man in question is the victim of murder. BBC Radio 4's Unmade Movies season. I'm not doing anything. Hitchcock's The Blind Man. Until I find out whose eyes I've got. Next Saturday afternoon at 2.30 and then available to download with the BBC iPlayer radio app. This is BBC Radio 4, where now we join Fee Glover with another conversation from The Listening Project. Hello, this is a timely chat between old friends Bob and Ben about rugby, why they love it, what's changed in the game and just how much pleasure it's brought them over the years. Bob used to be a dog handler in the police.